Hi everybody, my name is Ratika. I'm a senior computer science instructor at Juni, and today I'll be going through a data science project with you guys. So just as a brief introduction, I'm a rising senior at Duke University and I'm studying computer science and math. And a fun fact about me is that my interest in computer science was actually sparked after I took a data science class at my university. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to use data science to visualize data, specifically looking at survey data. So this project is really good for intermediate Python students and advanced Python students as well. If you haven't worked with Python as much, as long as you're well versed in coding and really any other language, this project is fine to do as well. Just make sure you follow along and stay tuned. So our end product for today is going to look something like this. What you can see here is we're going to make a bar graph of our family and friends' favorite foods. And we're going to use a lot of data science tools in Python to help us create this graph. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with that. So to start off, I've actually asked a couple of my family members and friends what their favorite foods are. So I've recorded those numbers here and I'm going to use that to actually go ahead and essentially create a data structure. And one way we can actually store this data today is a dictionary. So that's exactly what I'm going to use. I'm going to name my dictionary something like foods and I'm going to make sure I create a dictionary and where the keys are going to be the foods themselves and the values are going to be the numbers. The one thing that I'm going to make sure is that I keep the numbers in a list. And this is so that we can go on to our next step. So before that, let me just go ahead and finish up putting everything in the dictionary. And then finally we have other, and I'll just go ahead and capitalize it to be consistent. And so now I have all of my foods in a dictionary, so all of my data is in one place. Now one thing we use in data science quite frequently is a tool called a data frame. This is something that is in the pandas library in Python and it's a really powerful tool. It actually allows us to use data in a format in which it can be graphed. So in order for me to go ahead and use the pandas library, I'm going to go ahead and import it. So I'm going to go ahead and import pandas as pd. And the reason I'm going to import it as pd is so that I don't have to keep typing pandas out all the time. In order to make my data frame, I'm going to first of all want to store it. So I'm going to say df, that'll be the name of my data frame. And I'm going to say pd.dataframe. And I'm going to say my data is going to come from my foods dictionary. So while this goes ahead and loads, I just want to touch upon why I put all my numbers in lists. So data frames in pandas use this list or the values that you see in a dictionary to actually create the data frame. So even if you have only one value or one number in the value, it's important that you put it in list format so that it works properly. Great, our data frames seem to work well. And now just to make sure and just to show you really what a data frame looks like, I'm going to go ahead and print it out. So what you'll see here is that the data frame looks like a table and the header of the table is actually the categories that we're going to look at and inside the table you have the values of how many people liked a certain food. So this is great. It's in a form now that we can use in order to graph it. What I'm going to do to graph this is I'm going to use a package called Seaborn. So I'm going to import Seaborn and I'm going to import it as SNS. And SNS again is just an abbreviation. And in order to graph this, I'm going to use sns.varplot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this data is coming from the data frame. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to have to save my file as well as clear file. So in order to do that, I'm going to import matplotlibrary.pyplot. And I'm going to import this as PLT. And what I'll go ahead and do is I'll say, okay, let's save the figure. 
I'm going to call this bar1.png and I'm going to go ahead and then clear the file. So now when I run this, we should be able to see a bar plot. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we have a bar plot or a bar graph, and what we see here is that it's a great representation of our data. We can clearly see that pizza is the winner when it comes to favorite foods. But what would be helpful to give any reader or anyone who's viewing this some context would be to title the axes as well as give the bar graph itself a title. So that's what we're going to do next. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to save this bar plot. I'm going to save it in a variable called bar graph. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to say my bar graph is going to have set titles and axes. So let's go ahead and make a title. We can say favorite food uh, survey results. And I should spell survey correctly. We'll also go ahead and give titles to the X label. So I'll say type of food. And then the Y label. I'll say number of people. That being said, I'll go ahead and run this one more time. And what we see here is our new and improved bar plot with the axes that are titled as well as a general title as well. So this is a great project to go ahead and dip your feet into the huge realm of data science and if you are so inclined to do so I think a great challenge here would be to look at the Seaborn documentation which is readily available online and see how you can change the color palette of the bar graph. Also one thing that is extremely useful is to be able to change the scale of some of the axes. So for example here we might want to change the scale of the y-axis from going to up to 20 people instead of only up to 15. So that's something to look into as well. So those are a couple of challenges, but I really hope you enjoyed this first project into looking into data science. Thanks! Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Juni Learning for weekly updates on math and coding tutorials. And if you want to keep watching more videos, you can do that right here. Also, if you want to keep learning from instructors like me, don't forget to check out junilearning.com for private and group courses that we have to offer. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope to see you next time.